Good morning, Bulldogs. Here's to another week. Um, this is your update for March 30th, 2020. I'm keeping my video simple today. Um, I know it got a little fancy last week, um, so I hope you don't mind. Um, so the first thing we'll do as normal is look at the New York Times. I did mention I'm going to plan some different news type related things this weekend. I am. Um, let's first catch up on what happened over the weekend now you may have seen that um the president gave a press conference yesterday and a few things came out of that um one is that his easter deadline to stop the social distancing protocols and things like that has now been extended at least another 30 days so we'll all be in this sort of situation that we're in at least until april 30th right now um, we also saw new numbers um, about the amount of cases in both New York, New Jersey, and the country, the world, um, and even the amount of deaths. Um, Dr. Fauci um, spoke this weekend and gave some alarming news that the death uh, toll in the United States alone could be between 100,000, or as you see here, 200,000. So we want to do our best to make sure that doesn't happen. Hopefully you're staying uh, inside. Um, Chinese gear arrived in New York. Um, some countries say, hey, you might not trust that Chinese gear. We'll see what our leaders decide to do with it. Um, Spain is asking their country basically to go into hibernation to stop the spread there. Um, so this is the world map you see, unfortunately, where we are, not the world map, the US map, um, we have many cases over 59,000 in new york i don't think you can see the new jersey number there but those numbers are released every day as well um so not much change here except you see some more countries in this orange range um where they get at least 100 cases a day for the past seven days a few more spreading to this red um red-ish color where you get about a thousand new cases a day for a week um, in Europe. And then of course we have photos of how this um, virus is affecting places throughout the world. And of course the markets will open back up today. See what that happens. Um, New York confirmed over 60,000 cases. Um, Andrew Cuomo warned it could go even higher. You may have seen the Jacob Javits Center um, has been um, redone to be like an emergency hospital. Uh, the president gave um, a presser on, <coughs> excuse me, I believe it was Saturday, about the USS Comfort, which is basically a big ship coming up to New York. Um, that won't help the people with coronavirus, but people who need emergency care for other reasons, so that they don't go to the hospitals where they might get contaminated. Um, the toll that it's taking on healthcare workers. I know many of you said your parents um, work in the medical field around the hospitals in the area. I hope they're all doing well. Please give all your families my best, whether they're in the healthcare profession or not. Um, this is New York City teachers. Photos of an empty New York City, which is unbelievable. Uh, um, General Motors now trying to make ventilators instead of cars. Uh, there was something called the Defense Production Act, um, where the government can actually say, hey, you have to stop making this and start making that, which usually happens in wartime. We can talk about that later. A lot of things to do at home. A dozen good films under 90 minutes. How to make cold sesame noodles with peanut butter instead of sesame paste. You know, I do put peanut butter in my ramen noodles. So I might read that. If you guys read this and do any of those things, uh, share it with me. Um, I'm trying to think of some more fun activities to start doing later in the week. So um, love to hear what you guys are doing in the meantime. So that's the main news stories uh, for good oops, or for bad right now. So let's keep going here. 
Um, so now we'll talk a little bit about uh, Women's History Month we have today and tomorrow, um, where we'll continue to talk about Women's History Month. You will have an assignment based um, off of these videos and the, the stories of the various women I'm sharing um, by the middle of the week. So hopefully you've been watching them. If not, remember you can go back on YouTube and um, catch up and even see the ones for the days your classes weren't scheduled to meet. But anyway, let's talk about uh, Ms. Naomi Sims first, uh, born on this day in 1948. Now I think, I'm trying to remember, she was born in Mississippi, um, but actually spent uh, much of her childhood in Pennsylvania, I think the Pittsburgh area. Hopefully I'm not confusing my biographies. Um, but she was an American model, uh, a businesswoman, and author. So in terms of being a model, by the time she was 13, so about your age, she was actually already five foot ten, And um, she would tell the story of how, you know, kids would pick on her and how awkward that was for her to be so tall at such a young age. Um, but, you know, she persisted on. Um, and eventually she wanted to go into the modeling industry. Well, you can imagine in the 60s, the 70s, um, there were not many um, models that were not white. Um, and she really, as much as she tried, was not getting any, um, any work as a model um, uh, through these modeling agencies. So then she sort of said, well, I'll know what I'll do. So she actually went to photographers and photographers took pictures of her that they shared and then other people were like and then sort of caught on so she sort of found her own way her own route to become um a model right this is before instagram and all those sorts of things so um that's one way she tried to overcome the obstacles she faced um due to racism she also mentioned having some pushback because she did marry a white man and at that time um interracial marriages were very rare and she did mention about the different um biases she faced um as a couple like that and she was the first african-american model to appear on the cover of ladies home journal that was a milestone um i mentioned she was a businesswoman she actually um designed and created wigs and had a wig industry because she said, you know, there were plenty of wigs you could buy, but none really for African-American women, none that had the right color and texture. So she um, saw an open industry there, um, a need that she helped to fulfill. So um, unfortunately she did die um, younger than um, we would have liked to, of course, uh, in 2009 um, in Newark, New Jersey. Um, next, we have um, something to um, appear to the appeal to the STEM side of us. And I know um, we've talked specifically in my um, block one class with Dr. V about different ways that history and biology um, merge. We talked about, uh, let's see, uh, bioanthropologists that have studied um, the DNA, I think it was of um, King Henry, right, to see like you know, why his wife's um, children were dying so young. Um, there are also bio archaeologists who've studied like shipwrecks and things like that. Well, she is um, a historian of science. So she knows a lot of science, um, but she's a historian about it. So her focus was on 19th century bio biology. She actually wrote um, a lot of works on Charles Darwin. Um, if you look online, I didn't read like any of her entire books yesterday, but I was prosing through some of them and read a couple of pages and they're, they're not written like a science book or like a history textbook. It's, it's, um, they were enjoyable to read. So it might be something you look into. And she's currently, um, a professor of the history of science at Harvard. So very well renowned for her work. Um, one more today, I have Shala Sharkat. Um, she's the founder and publisher of Zanon magazine. Zanon means woman in Farsi, um, and it's about the concerns of Iranian women. And this has called, been called by some the most important Iranian women's journal after the Iranian Revolution. Now, due to the restrictions um, in Iran, um, she did face a lot of controversy and a lot of um, threats um, and even um, had to go to court many times because they thought that 
her content in her magazine was considered, you know, it pushed the boundaries too far and it's too controversial. So they in fact shut down her magazine in 2008. Um, and it did reopen in, uh, in 2014, which was a big deal. She was able to have the ma magazine going again. I was trying to find current, um, if the magazine was still going or what's going on with her in the past year or so. I didn't find information that was that current. If you guys do find anything on her, please share it with me. I would love to read um, about that. Um, and I gave an example of when she was even imprisoned um, for uh, attending a conference in Berlin, which is in Germany, uh, because it discussed the future of Iranian politics. And they're like, you know, you can't be doing that in, um, in Europe. So, um, you know, Definitely an example of persistence there. Um, so for today, um, today you're gonna do an actively learn assignment. I know you're familiar with actively learn. And because we're finishing up our unit on revolutions, um, this is gonna be one on the Venezuelan revolution. Um, last year, so my sophomores, we did a whole lot about what was going on in Venezuela. This year, um, we really were focusing more on the primaries and the coronavirus as the big news uh, for good or for bad. Um, so we haven't really learned much about the Venezuelan revolution. Um, there is, uh, there was more current um, news coming out about um, the United States involvement in Venezuela last week. So I'll probably mention that tomorrow um, after this assignment go, um, goes, or maybe Thursday, actually, after all classes get a chance to do this. Um, but feel free to look it up on your own. Um, so this is about the, Ven um, the revolution that is currently going on in Venezuela. So um, you have this article. Um, I did put together this actively learned, so I included my own notes. Um, there's some links, so you can like click on learn more about Juan Guaido. Um, and then there's some multiple choice questions, um, some short answer questions. Make sure if it's short answer, you know, you're not just doing like a fr sentence fragment or a sentence. Try to give some detail because remember the short answers are sort of um, graded in, in four different segments as either incorrect, basic, proficient, or advanced. So, you know, your goal is to probably get proficient. And then if you go in a lot of detail, um, and you're not just copying and pasting, but you know, you're making sense, um, then that would be an advanced answer. Um, if you have this up by noon, my goal is to have the grade up today, um, just to give you guys some incentive to, uh, to get this done. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm thinking of everyone. Um, I'm going to try to do some things like you requested to do optional collaborative events so we can interact with um, each other more in a, in a safe, um, and, practical way, but, you know, feel free to update me and how everything's going. All right. Stay safe, Bulldogs. Be well.